What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm super excited to talk to you guys about this one. This is one that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the testing phase. It actually changed from what it originally was and became less of a dessert and more of a dessert slash sticky amber combo. Of course, we're talking about the newly released Zaharoff Signature Orum. This is the four ounce bottle size with the very thick plate, which we'll look at the presentation more in just a little bit. So I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts. Stay tuned. So, as per usual, it's, I have to give this disclaimer that George Zaharoff is indeed a very close friend of mine. So there is natural bias that's going to be here, but if there was anything I didn't like about the fragrance, such as, you know, pretty much just two of his releases in the past where maybe they weren't necessarily my, you know, favorite choices for sure, um, I definitely give you guys my true thoughts and what I feel about the, the fragrances, though I am along through the process of testing for all the renditions. Uh, I would like to think that also qualifies me to be one of the best to be able to talk about these fragrances with you guys and kind of let you know how they develop in nuance. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. Test when you can. If samples become available, which I know at some point they will, buy a decant from your favorite decant place that grabs bottles. But uh, let's definitely take a look at this and get into it. So we have to start off with the box. Gotta love the honeycomb, the uh, just gorgeous look. The Zaharoff B, the texturing, the gradient metallics. I mean, look at how it kind of does a dance in the lighting. Signature Aurum that goes around. You have the Z in some of the, the cutouts. Elixir of the world, everything on the back. And you have standard stuff here on the bottom. Pretty much Zaharoff fragrances are the only ones I keep the box on at this point because they're all part of a series telling a story. You have that metallic gold on the inside. And then we'll also take a look around the two ounce bottle same exact thing just in a smaller form factor literally the exact same box so the biggest caveat though is this bottle this is the four ounce bottle this is the one that has the plate so there's a lot of deep texture this is embossed and debossed if we get really close you guys can see some of that texture it's contoured everything's etched into the plate this is a thick metal plate there's 3D detailing to the Zaharoff B. Has the sticker on the bottom, Signature Orum, right under Zaharoff. Zaharoff into the glass. You can see the thickness of this plate. It's actually form factored to the contour of the bottle shape. And you have this brushed look, almost like a brushed brass look to the cap, which is an all metal cap. Has the Zaharoff Z on the inside of the cap. Has this typical gold atomizer with his usual nice dis distribution on his atomizer so the difference here as we take a look into the two ounce bottle the two ounce bottle does not have the plate here you can see here it's his usual two ounce bottles there we go and you can see the printing that's on the box is etched onto the glass on the back side so you can see it through the effect with that light honey colored because there's actual real honey in here it's a honey raw honey absolute so there you go that's the difference in the two black Zaharoff logo says signature orum in black here towards the bottom so that's going to be your difference between the two the two ounce bottle looks as such the four ounce bottle looks as such so like I said I was part of the testing phase from the start so originally I have the notes on screen for you guys originally this was kind of inspired by a dessert called baklava admittedly I've never tried baklava but I have to tell you that the original two renditions the first two that George was debating on was it was very much a delicious snack cake honey cinnamon um, it wasn't as much of an amber fragrance it was straight up gourmand sweet cake dessert which those of you that like stuff like that that would have been your thing Smelled phenomenal. Cinnamon bomb. A lot of cinnamon in that original rendition. But it was crazy strong. But I don't always want to smell like a dessert cake. Okay, so gourmand's very situation for me. Straight up gourmand dessert smelling fragrances. I maybe wear anywhere from five to ten times a year. And that's about it. So it wasn't really going to be my thing. And this is the final rendition. This was as of July 12th. 
So this is the lab sample. This is the exact same thing as what's in here, only this is a small test batch. This is part of a very large macerated at the lab batch. So I've got plenty of experience over the years with the fragrance and alter renditions. So what you're going to get from this one, okay, I don't want you guys to go into this expecting like the honey you would find in One Million Lucky, for example, that candied, synthetic, sweet honey. Smells great. I love stuff like that. I do. This is more raw animalic. A lot of clove at the top that doesn't specifically smell like clove. The clove supports the honey absolute that actually was part of a CO2 extraction process with actual honey comb and everything like George has video of Claude with the gloves on and everything pulling the you know whatever you want to call this stuff this grating that the honey's in that the bees create just pulling with honey just dripping down before they went through the process like that he was it's pretty cool to see I don't know if George will ever release that you guys would have to ask George uh, but he did tell me about it so I know the process was very specific with the CO2 extraction and the way Claude, by the way, Claude Deere perfumed this, who perfumes all of George's house releases for the signature line, uh, the base DNA being signature Poron, which you will get a little bit of here. It has the Orientals and such, uh, but it, it has its gourmand facets to it. So picture a very raw, animalistic honey smell, almost a slight sour, bitter spice, if you will. I know it sounds kind of weird, but when you smell it, you'll totally walk down the path with me here on how I'm articulating this. Because um, it's not the candied sweet. It's sweet, it's delicious, but you can tell this isn't a typical designer fragrance and it has some high quality uh, raw materials here with these oils. Uh, it's like honey draped, raw honey draped over a cinnamon stick. The coconut milk adds a, a slight lactonic feel to it, a little bit of creaminess to balance with the hazelnut almond combination. Uh, the praline, tonka bean don't really take over the fragrance because as it starts to transition, those, the sweet notes, the honey, because the honey never goes away. That honey that you get in the top never, ever, 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 ever goes away. You're getting it from start to finish with this fragrance. It's what makes the glue-like texture to this fragrance. It stays forever and ever and ever. It's crazy long-lasting. It's not his loudest fragrance, but it's one of, if not his absolute longest-lasting fragrance, and it's also not his highest oil concentration. So that's a lesson, and high oil concentration doesn't necessarily mean longer lasting sometimes it just depends on the composition and the oils used that's the case here um because i believe it's an 18 percent if i remember correctly actually i think that'll be right here in the card shame on me for not knowing off the top of my head it says edp concentration eau de parfum it doesn't actually have a percentage i believe it is 18 percent because the final rendition lab sample was 18 percent so that's what it is and it's crazy long lasting that that oil concentration allows it to have more brightness to it as well because it transitions. This is the most important part to talk about to me. A very sticky, resinous amber smell from the benzoin that was used here in conjunction with this raw honey absolute that Claude chose to use. The combination of the two make this, and, and it was brilliant the way George kind of made this classification for it, an amber gourmand where it's very much gourmand faceted. You there's tasty deliciousness to this. There's a lot of elements to it and accords that are created that gourmand lovers are going to appreciate. And it's also more of an, a spiced, a sticky, resinous amber that people that aren't big gourmand lovers, but they, don't, they like some sweet, but they don't want to smell like a dessert, can appreciate. So this kind of pleases both sides of the discussion when it comes to a gourmand, because it's not through and through gourmand, but there's a lot of gourmand elements to it. So I think the classification of amber gourmand is brilliant because that's exactly what it is. Very sticky, resinous, honey amber, a lot of spice, cinnamon bark. It really smells like a cinnamon stick. Very authentic. Um, cinnamon straws, cinnamon sticks. Think about that. If you ever held that in your hand and that smell it emits, it's that. Drape some raw honey on that with a sticky amber and a, a little bit of hazelnut, basically, is how you can look at it with a touch of vanilla. It smells magnificent. This is just in time for the fall and winter. People are going to enjoy this greatly, I believe. Um, of course, like I said, there's always the natural bias, but I mean, if there was something I didn't like about it, guys, I would absolutely tell you there's something I don't like about it. Uh, it smells phenomenal. I don't rate his fragrances because of the, the friendship and the bias. I just tell you guys what I think, and that's basically what's going on here. So let's talk about the performance because I know a lot of you are wondering. So when it comes to what I get 
I don't know if it's what you can expect, but let's call what I get as a baseline to kind of get an idea. Longevity is 10 to 12 hours. Like I was saying, super long lasting. I haven't clocked it beyond 12 hours because I typically take a shower by then. So it could potentially still be there the next day um, because I typically spray somewhere on the arm and those definitely get scrubbed. Whereas with my hand, even with washing my hands, the top of my hands, the oils, stronger oils tend to survive a couple hand washings. So that's not the case. Like right now, it's my scent of the day. I have it on my forearms. So longevity is great. The projection for about two hours, hour and a half to two hours, very stout. Very stout, slightly beyond arm's reach, but not a room filler. Not a room filler on my skin, uh, but very strong, very pronounced. Kind of, I prefer it that way because the original rendition was a monster and it was just too much. It didn't, it was too overwhelming. Now, I know some of you watching this are like, oh, that's what I wanted. For some people, that may work in their everyday life. For most people, that's not, that's not going to work, okay? Because I think the way this was reworked suits it so much better because it is strong. It is pronounced. People are going to smell you. This is going to get compliments for people. There's no doubt in my mind. I can't guarantee something like that. No fragrance can. But it has that kind of push. In that first hour and a half, two hours, everybody's smelling you when you walk by. Now, when it calms down, because of the thickness to this, it creates a density to the CIs that's left behind. That scent bubble that's going to follow you around for the life of the fragrance is on the moderate side. So the projection that you do get calms down not too far off from the CIs you end up with. So it radiates really well. You have this bubble. At least that's been my experience in you know, like two plus years of on and off testing I've been doing through all its trials and tribulations and inversions and tweaks and mods and all that good stuff because it's been this for a while now. It's, it's like this kind of bubble, thick bubble around me. Uh, I typically do five, six sprays with this one personally because I know somebody's going to ask, do you need that much? Not necessarily. Uh, if you want to enjoy your CIs that much stronger, five to six sprays. You're going to smell yourself all day long. I promise you. Um, it's one of those deals where I would call it a moderate sillage because this is going to linger. It has a density to it. It's a very thick aroma. And I think that's kind of what slows it down from screaming off the skin is it's, it's such a heavy composition because of the honey benzoin combination here. Clove, hazelnut, all these are heavier notes, don't get me wrong, but the honey absolute, that raw honey absolute, it's the focal point of this fragrance and it really... It dictates the pace of how it develops, how it lasts, how it radiates and exudes off the skin. Obviously, skin chemistry and olfactory percep perception is going to play a role in here greatly. Everybody's experience may vary you know, slightly to maybe a little more than that, but most people are going to get a pretty similar experience with the way it comes off, I think. Uh, and I think longevity is, is not going to be an issue for anyone because you would just have to have the most absorbative dry skin on the planet to not get great longevity from this. So across the board, above average projection, above average sillage, and phenomenal longevity. So that was pretty wordy. Like I said, when it comes to Zahara fragrances, I don't put it on my rating scale because, I mean, it's not going to be a low rating. He, makes, he puts out phenomenal products. Anybody that's familiar with Zaharoff's work, you know he only puts out really, really, really good to super great stuff. That's just what it is. That's not a bias. That's a, that's a market observation, I guess you could say, uh, and just experience over time with it. So uh, I appreciate those of you for sitting through this review and hearing what I had to say. If you're interested in picking it up, uh, this is one of those rare occasions that a new release, you actually can get 10% off. It's no longer at the pre-order price. It's back to retail price. And if you'd like a discount, Use the link down in the description. It will save you 10% off. If you're interested, it is an affiliate code. It does help support the channel if you're interested in doing so. Uh, I'm pretty sure samples will come at some point. I can't confirm nor deny. He typically does because this is not going to be a limited release as far as I know. Um, so definitely check that out. And you can always go to fatboyfragrances.com if you want to get a decant. I know Juan's probably buying a few bottles. If you want to get a variety of decant sizes and you want more than just 2 ml to sample, or if you're ready to pick up one of the bottle sizes, like I said, 10% off down below if you're interested. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe before you leave this video. Uh, I'm excited for any of you that did pre-order to get your bottles. I'm curious to know what you guys think once you get it. Definitely come back to the video and let me know down in the comment section. Uh, and until next time, I will say if you get your hands on Signature or from Zaharoff and you give it a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later.
Have a good one, guys. Music.